for heart paper in the deep learning algorithm for atrial fibrillation. Whereas, so, so explain how that works. Let's use that example because yeah. that's near and dear to everybody's wrist. And I see you're wearing your Apple Watch there as well. So let's just say you went into the Apple Store today for the very first time and you bought an Apple Watch. Okay, so first of all, it's on the back surface of the wrist, the bowler surface of the wrist. And what is it shining through? And I assume it's shining it onto the veins in the back of your arm. Yeah, no, it's, it's picking up optically each heart rate. And you can see the light that yeah. it's used. And for the deep learning algorithm, which actually was first cleared by a startup, a live core, and then a year later, Apple, which they didn't even acknowledge that they had been a year after the first. But nonetheless, on their watch, they get heart rate. So at rest, and then when you are active. And then they basically, for you, it has your data whereby when you have heart rate at rest, that's off track for you. It says, hmm, get a cardiogram. And you get a one lead cardiogram when you press the, the crown on the ECG. And you get a good quality cardiogram. And then if it has atrial fibrillation, which also, lead does it most closely approximate on the 12 lead? It's a lead one. You get a cardiogram read for atrial fibrillation, which is actually one thing that's pretty good for that. I was about to say, not to minimize that, but AFib seems like about the easiest thing to pick up because of the irregularity of it, right? Yeah, although there, there is some false positives and negatives because sometimes the P waves are that you're, you're looking to be absent, you know, sometimes you can get faked out. And so it's reasonably good. You know, it's in the 90 plus percent accuracy level, but it's all about the base theorem of for people more who, information. Well, for people who are not risk, a lot of people have an Apple Watch who are you know young and have zero risk of atrial fibrillation. They get a cardiogram, it gets them anxious, and they may even get workups by a cardiologist. So this is a problem where we have marketing of an algorithm, the first deep learning algorithm. How long does it take, by the way, um, to learn a person well enough that it would be willing to make a recommendation like that? Oh, just a matter of hours. Wow. Or certainly by a couple of days, it's got it down. Okay. But yeah, I mean, you know, your heart, resting heart rate by the accelerometers, it knows that you're not moving. Yeah. And hmm, why did your resting heart rate used to be sixty? Why is it hundred something? And then it'll tell you to get a cardiogram. But and it can't make any other diagnosis. It can't diagnose any ventricular rhythm. Not now. Or atrial tachycardia or anything else. Ultimately, it should be able to, but those algorithms haven't really been validated yet. But and ultimately, you know, now I use a six lead cardiogram. It is on the watch, but you can just do that with sensors and put it on the leg. And wait, wait, how do you do that? That's interesting. Yeah, you know, it's basically half the size of a credit card. Where, then, where do you get this? This is it's an aftermarket product, or no? It's actually marketed now by a live core. Yeah, you know, it's basically half the size of a credit card. Where, then, where do you get this? This is it's an aftermarket product, or no? It's actually marketed now by a live core, the one that came with this ECG on the watch first. They actually put it on the Apple Watch, but it was their algorithm. They came up with a six lead, which uh, you then put that on your leg, your left leg, and then you get six all limb leads. And you do this with your patients as well? Yeah, every patient. When I see them, instead of just taking their pulse, I also do a six lead cardiogram. It's been remarkably insightful because it's free, it takes a second, and then I can really be much more certain about if they have an arrhythmia, but also diagnose conduction system abnormalities. So, so it's accurate enough that you can measure your intervals perfectly. Oh my gosh, it's it's the quality is amazing. Yeah, I mean the six lead. Now, can you send them home with the same kit, and then can they get a six lead on themselves at home and let you see the data? They could. I haven't done that yet, but that's probably where this is headed. The reason why this is actually funny, you mentioned it, Peter. You can even do your own stress test with it. Yeah, of course. In fact, you could do a real stress test, which is in the actual environment under which you need to right. be stressed. Yeah, I did that the other day. I, I did a rest ECG, and then I got on a bicycle, stationary bicycle, and went really hard. And then I just after I, I got off and did a six lead again. I, so I said, "Wow, you can do a stress electrocardiogram, high quality six lead, and never go near." Where's the output? Time. Where are you seeing the output? Oh, on your phone. Okay. And you can make it a PDF and send it off to your doctor. It makes it automatically. Yes. Huh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, that's.